So I've got a big pot of boiling water. I'm gonna start with the linguine, one pound of linguine. And in the meantime, I'm gonna make the sauce. So what I did was I cooked red onions and a little bit of butter and oil until they're really tender. Now I've got two tablespoons of garlic, lots of garlic, right in. And next I have some red pepper flakes. Give it a little heat. Okay, I'm just gonna let that garlic cook for about a minute while I season the shrimp. Lots of salt and pepper. Make sure they're really well seasoned. So I'm gonna take the shrimp and I'm just gonna put them into the pan with the onions and just let them sear on one side. And I patted the shrimp dry so they would sear nicely. Okay, that's the shrimp. So just let it sear on one side. And then when it's just slightly pink, I'm gonna turn them over and sear them on the other side. I love the name of this dish, Fra Diablo. It means brother devil, it means it's really spicy. Okay, the shrimp are nice and pink, and now I'm gonna add some white wine. Because of course, isn't that what Italians do? About two thirds of a cup of white wine. Great, and I'm just gonna let this simmer away, and then you can drink the rest of it. Okay, next is panko. So I've got butter. I'm just gonna put some panko crumbs right in, some Japanese bread flakes. And I'm just gonna to toss these on a low heat, just until they turn brown and crispy. Keep an eye on this, because it happens fast, see? Just happened. Okay, so the panko is perfectly browned. I'm just gonna add a little parsley, a little salt and pepper. Make sure it's nicely seasoned. Okay, this is ready for later. So the shrimp look like it's perfectly cooked, the wine's reduced, and I'm gonna pour in the sauce. So this is a rabiata sauce, it's a jar. Don't be tempted to use marinara sauce for this. A rabiata sauce has this gutsiness, like this really wonderful spiciness that's important in this dish. Okay, so this is the sauce. Let's see how the pasta's doing. So I'm just gonna take the pasta and just put it right into the sauce. I don't drain it so I can save the pasta water in case I need more. I'm gonna put some parsley in to flavor it and it looks great and just toss this whole thing together. Even as it sits, it really absorbs the starch and the pasta sauce and the shrimp. Looks like it's perfect. Okay, now I'll show you how I serve it up. Mm, this looks amazing. And it's moist and just absolutely delicious. And then with a little sprinkle of the panko crumbs on top, give it a little crunch, a little flavor. So that shrimp and the linguine fra diavolo with store-bought pasta sauce. I'm not gonna tell if you're not gonna tell. That looks delicious. Roasted shrimp with oreo is a great dish for a crowd. Best part of it is, the longer it sits, the better it gets. So the first thing I'm gonna do is roast some shrimp. A little olive oil, salt and pepper, it's actually a surprising way to cook shrimp on a sheet pan in the oven. I just find it really gives it more flavor. That's two pounds of shrimp, it's about 32 shrimp. Okay, into the oven, high temperature, 400 degrees for exactly six minutes and they're gonna be really delicious and succulent. And I think the orzo is just about ready. So I cooked three quarters of a pound of orzo in boiling salted water with a splash of olive oil. Good and hot. Whoa. <laughs> okay, that's drained. This is gonna go right into the big bowl. So the lemon vinaigrette, the first thing I need is half a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And a half a cup of olive oil. Two teaspoons of salt. One teaspoon of pepper. I'm gonna whisk it all together. just pour it right over the pasta. I'm gonna cut up some herbs and vegetables for the salad. So the first thing I need is a cup of chopped scallions. And then I'm just gonna run my knife right down the middle. Okay, just rough chop. The scallions and later red onions are gonna give this lots of sharp flavor. Right into the salad. Next thing is a cup of freshly chopped parsley. It's a big chop. I use flat leaf parsley, I think it has more flavor. But if you have curly parsley, it's just fine. <laughs> right into the bowl. 
about one cup of chopped fresh dill. So I'm gonna chop it roughly. You know, it's really important to use fresh herbs, especially when it's in a salad like this. But if you have some left over and you wanna chop it up, just put it in little containers, freeze it, and then just defrost it when you need it. Okay, one cup of dill right into the salad. Next thing is cucumbers. So just right down the middle. And just do cubes right into the salad. So I'm gonna put a half a cup of diced red onion into it. Just wanted to flavor the salad. Okay, the next thing is the shrimp. I think they're perfectly cooled. Okay, get all the flavor in. I'm just gonna toss it all together. And then the last thing, it's one of my favorite ingredients, good feta. And just put it in as gently as possible so it doesn't get all broken up. So what I'm doing here actually is I'm peeling the shrimp. I like to leave the tails on because when they're cooked, it's kind of a nice handle. And then I'm deveining it, run my knife right down the back. Just want to take that black vein out of the back of the shrimp and then just pull it out if it's in there. Sometimes there isn't any. These are two pounds of 12 to 15 count, which means there are 12 to 15 shrimp in a pound. Okay, so that's the shrimp. And now I'm gonna show you how to roast them. Spread them out on a sheet pan and just olive oil, just a couple of tablespoons, salt and pepper. Toss them together. And the important thing is you don't wanna pile them up, you want basically in one layer. So I'm just gonna spread them out. Okay, 400 degrees, eight to 10 minutes. These are gonna be so delicious. Now for the sauce. I'm a believer in classic sauces. Cocktail sauce is cocktail sauce. I just like to do it with the volume turned up. So some of the classic ingredients with a little more flavor. So I need half a cup of chili sauce. Actually, I like to combine chili sauce and ketchup. One's a little spicy, one's a little sweeter. Half a cup of ketchup. That should be about right. Three tablespoons of horseradish, give it lots of spice, lots of heat. One, two. Splash of Worcestershire sauce, give it a little depth of flavor. Splash of Tabasco, give it more heat, but a different kind of heat. And because I like the fresh flavor, a little bit of lemon to give it a nice sort of fresh citrusy flavor. Always goes with shrimp. A couple of teaspoons. Now, how easy is that? And that's the sauce. OK, I'm going to set it up. Bowl for the sauce in the middle. Shrimp should be ready. Oh, they look fantastic. Now, how fast is that? Okay, they're gonna be really hot, but ooh, if I work fast, I can do it. The shrimp are actually best if they're served warm or room temperature. These look really great. Well, I know how people went for the shrimp cocktail when I was catering, and we just used the boiled shrimp and Perfectly good cocktail sauce, but not great cocktail sauce like this. People are gonna go crazy. Fantastic. Shrimp cocktail, really fast and so delicious. Shrimp bisque, I love it, but every recipe I've seen is really complicated. I decided I'm gonna see if I can make a really simple version that's just delicious. I bought fish stock, and I've added the shrimp shells to it to give it even more flavor. I'm gonna strain the fish stock. I need three and three quarter cups. So if I have a little less, I'm just gonna add some water. Yeah, just a little water. Oh, 
Okay, so first thing I've done here is sauteed two cups of leeks and three tablespoons of olive oil. Just make sure the leeks are really, really clean before you cook them. Okay, I'm gonna add some garlic. About a tablespoon of garlic. To saute it for about a minute. I actually love shrimp bisque. I like that rich shrimp flavor and a little bit of sherry. So the next thing I need is a little bit of cayenne pepper, just a pinch, not too much. You don't want it to overpower the shrimp. And just cook that together. Okay. And then a pound of shrimp. This is where the shells came from. And just cook the shrimp for about three minutes until they're just perfectly pink and just tender. When the shrimp's cooked, I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients and have a really rich, delicious shrimp bisque. Well, I can't make good shrimp bisque without sherry, but I've actually decided a little cognac would help it too. So I'm gonna start with a quarter of a cup of cognac. I'm just gonna pour it right into the shrimp and leeks. Let it cook for a minute. Mm, that smells good and a quarter of a cup of dry sherry. And all that's just gonna really get into the shrimp and flavor the soup. Mm, now that smells like shrimp bisque, shrimp and sherry, so classic. Okay, I'm gonna puree this now. I'm gonna just put it right into the food processor. And now I'm just going to puree it until it's really chunky. I don't like it when it's too smooth. Okay, that's perfect. So now I'm going to make a white sauce that's going to be the base of the soup. This white sauce is really the same kind of white sauce I made for the lasagna. I'm starting with half a stick of butter and a quarter of a cup of flour. I'm gonna cook it over medium-low heat for about a minute, just to cook the flour. Then I'm adding two cups of half and half. I'm just gonna stir this until the half and half gets hot and it thickens with the flour. So far, it's been pretty easy. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna put in is the pureed shrimp and leeks. Mm, really smells good. You can smell the cognac and the sherry. That's gonna have so much flavor. The fish stock, three and three quarter cups. Third of a cup of tomato paste. Two teaspoons of salt. And one teaspoon of pepper. And that's it. I'm just gonna stir it up and just let this simmer. All the flavors are gonna go together. It's going to be rich and delicious, I hope. Okay, start by peeling and deveining the shrimp. Just run your knife down the back of the shrimp and use a small paring knife to remove the shell and the tail. You want to make sure that you get the vein out. That's that dark little line down the back of the shrimp. Then put the shrimp on a sheet pan. For this salad, you need two and a half pounds of 16 to 20 count shrimp. Drizzle them with olive oil. Sprinkle them with salt and pepper and mix it all together. Then spread them out in a single layer so they cook evenly and roast them in a 400 degree oven for six to eight minutes until they're pink, firm, and just barely cooked through. Now see what I mean about simple? That's simple. Okay, so the shrimp are gonna go into a big bowl. Oh, these smell so good. I want the shrimp so that they're warm, not really hot, and not cold. They absorb the sauce best that way. Good news about this shrimp salad is you can make a lot of it at one time. Put on as much sauce as you like. Probably most of this sauce. I never put the shrimp into the sauce. I put the sauce into the shrimp just so you can moderate how much sauce you have. Give that a good toss. Fantastic. And then the last thing I always add is the vegetables and the herbs. So you get just the right proportion. So this is dill, red onion, 
and capers. This is going to be fantastic. I always hold just a little bit back to decorate the top. Mix that together. Oh, I love the smell of this. Shrimp and red onion and dill and the roasted shrimp. It makes such a difference, you won't believe it. A little salt and pepper. Just to finish it. It's always sort of that salt and pepper at the end that you taste first hits your tongue. Just have to make sure it's okay. You never know. That's the best shrimp salad I ever had. Really tasty orange. Mm. I'm just gonna let these sit for about 20 minutes and let the flavors absorb. When the shrimp are just slightly warm, they absorb the sauce best. Several years ago, I discovered that roasting shrimp for shrimp cocktail was so much better than boiling it. And I thought, well, if I can roast it for shrimp cocktail, maybe I can do a dinner like that. So I came up with garlic and herb roast shrimp. So first I need some butter. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil. This is really the sauce. And then if I'm gonna call it garlic and herb roast shrimp, it's gonna have a lot of garlic. It's got two tablespoons of garlic in it. I don't wanna cook this too long because I don't want the garlic to overcook. Two teaspoons of rosemary, which is unusual for shrimp, but it's really good. A little pinch of hot pepper flakes. This is a great weeknight dinner because it doesn't take long to put together. One teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of pepper. And I'm just gonna cook that for literally a minute, just until you can smell the fragrance of the garlic. It's fantastic. So that's the sauce. I'm gonna turn off the heat. This dish has lots of lemon in it. I've got lemon zest, lemon juice, and sliced lemons. So first I'm gonna zest a whole lemon right into the sauce. I love the way the heat really brings out the lemon flavor. That's the zest. So next is the shrimp, and I've got really big shrimp. They're 10 to 12 count, which means that there are 10 to 12 shrimp in each pound. They're huge. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this entire sauce over the shrimp. This is a great dish because not only am I gonna bake it in this pan, but in fact, I'm gonna serve it in the pan too. I'm gonna get all of the herbs and the garlic and everything right into this pan. And then to add to the lemon flavor, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this lemon that I've just zested and slice it and put the slices in between the shrimp and it'll all bake together. And I serve it with crusty bread and maybe some kind of a roasted vegetable. So what I did was I arranged the shrimp in a concentric circle with their little tails up. And I've got shrimp that have the tails still on just because I think it looks better. So this is gonna roast 400 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes. That's pretty fast, right? And I just happen to have one that's coming right out of the oven now. How beautiful is that? I'm just gonna give it another little squeeze of lemon juice. I love when the warm shrimp absorbs the lemon. And I would say, Dinner doesn't get any faster than that. Two pounds of really large shrimp. I mean, they're called jumbo, they're called extra large. Forget that. They're 12 to 15 count, which means they're 12 to 15 in a pound. And then what I'm gonna do is devein them, which is run my knife right down along the back and take the little vein out that's right in there. Don't want that. You can actually buy them in the store like this, but I just thought it's so easy to do. I'll just do it myself. So the second thing I wanna do is butterfly them. Just run your knife right along the back, and you want to open it up just sort of like a little book. And then when I put them in the dish, the little tails are going to stand up like that. And also, they're very even. It's going to cook very quickly because it's half the thickness. OK, that's it for the shrimp. Into a big bowl, and I'm going to add some great flavors. OK, now, really simple marinade gives them lots of flavor. White wine, two tablespoons of white wine. Three tablespoons of olive oil. Two teaspoons of salt. One teaspoon of pepper. Toss it all together. And next I'm gonna make this incredible crispy topping with Japanese bread crumbs. So I need one and a half sticks of butter and then lots and lots of garlic. Four huge cloves of garlic. Just gonna chop them up. You want minced garlic, because nobody wants to take a big bite out of garlic. Okay, right in with the butter. The next thing is a shallot. This is a very big shallot, so I'm using one big shallot, or if you have smaller ones, two. Just a rough chop, dice it. Okay, 
That's one very big shallot. Now lots of fresh herbs. Three tablespoons of Italian parsley. It's an Italian dish, you gotta make Italian parsley. Okay, just rough chop. Italian parsley really does have a little more flavor than the curly parsley. Okay, so that's about three tablespoons right in the bowl. Just to give it a little texture, one teaspoon of fresh rosemary. Just a pinch of it. You just want it very subtly in the background. So just a little pinch, like one teaspoon. That should be enough. Okay, now a little heat, a quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and lots of lemon. And be sure you zest it before you juice it, otherwise you can't zest it. Okay, so one teaspoon, lemon, parsley, garlic. I mean, how bad can it be? Okay, that should be about a teaspoon, right into the bowl. Two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Just add a little bit of liquid and catch the seeds. Next, an egg yolk, and that's going to bind it. Mash it together. And then I'm going to add panko, which is Japanese breadcrumbs. They're sort of very light and airy. But if you can't find them, you can always use breadcrumbs. But I find they're available in seafood shops and specialty stores, but I actually find them in the grocery store now. Okay, two thirds of a cup of Japanese bread crumbs or bread flakes. So much flavor in this topping. Okay, time to arrange the shrimp in the dish. So I've got a gratin dish. It's about 14 inches long, and it's not very deep. It's like an inch and a half, but you can really use any size. This is perfect for two pounds of shrimp. So I'm gonna take the cut part of the shrimp and just put it right down flat in the dish with the tail curving up and in, concentric circles, all the way around the outside of this dish. And so now the shrimp are really, they're quite thin and they'll cook really quickly. I don't mind taking a little time when I'm getting ready for a party. I just hate cooking when my friends are there, so I find this very relaxing. And the other thing is I never try out a new dish on my friends. I hardly even do it with Jeffrey. When I'm entertaining, I want to be really sure that the dish is exactly the flavor I want it to be. And that usually takes one or two tries. Okay, take what's left, olive oil and the white wine, salt and pepper, pour it over the top. And now I'm ready for the topping. This is the good stuff. And I'm just gonna crumble it all over the top. So if I were gonna make this in advance, I would make it to this point and then refrigerate it. And then bake it before my friends got there. But this is so delicious, I want you to see how fabulous it is when it comes out of the oven. Okay, into the oven, 425 degrees for about 10 minutes, and all it's gonna need is a spritz of fresh lemon juice the minute it comes out of the oven. I'm making linguine with shrimp scampi. It's a great summer dish. I add oil to the pasta pot so that the pasta doesn't stick together and salt for flavor. Okay, that's gonna cook for seven to 10 minutes according to the directions on the package. Okay, that's three tablespoons of olive oil and about three tablespoons of butter. I do the olive oil because it has a high burning temperature and the butter because it has lots of flavor. I know this looks like a lot, but it's the sauce for the entire dish. And about one and a half tablespoons of garlic. With garlic, you really don't want to cook it too long, so just about a minute. There's nothing worse than the flavor of burnt garlic. So one minute while I get everything else ready. So the first thing is shrimp. And what I buy is peeled and deveined shrimp from the fish store. If you can't buy it, you can always peel and devein it yourself. I'm gonna add a pound of shrimp and just cook it for a very short time, like three to five minutes. And all that flavor of the garlic is gonna get into the shrimp. So first thing I'm gonna do is salt and pepper the shrimp. I want it to have lots of flavor because when you add the pasta, the sauce has to flavor the pasta also. So it's gonna be really strongly flavored. Just turn the shrimp so they cook evenly on both sides. It smells so good, all that garlic and butter and oil. How bad can that be? <laughs> Michael's so great with flowers. I can't wait to see what he's doing at the table. That looks good, I 
hope Ina likes it. So, just drain from the drain the water from it, and then it's going to go right into that pan with the shrimp and the garlic and butter and oil. It's going to absorb all that great flavor. Okay, just like that. Two spoons. Just toss it all together. This is actually a great way to make any pasta. Italians do it. Even when you're making pasta with tomato sauce, as you cook the pasta and the sauce together for the last few minutes, and it really absorbs the flavor. Okay, and then the last ingredients are lemon zest, lemon juice, I like a little bit of heat, so just a sprinkling of red pepper flakes. Okay, just toss that together, and then I have two more things to put in. Parsley. Okay, right on top. And then, because I want you to know, you can't really see the lemon, but I want you to know it's lemon, what I do is a few thin slices of lemon. People aren't going to eat them, but they'll, they'll see that it's lemon. So I'm going to add a few slices of lemon to the whole thing before I finish tossing. This is really a great summer lunch.